All right, hey, Joe, welcome to the next part of the Wizard 101 walkthrough. Might I be of some service educating you in matters relating to pets and their profound possibilities? The Wizard City Pet Pavilion has experts aplenty. They'll merrily monopolize your concentration with a wealth of useful information. So speak, if you will, to all of them. You can start with my little green friend here, Sir Nigel Higginbottom. He'll tell you more and can set you upon the right path. I apologize if the episode is going to be pretty boring, but uh, Why, let's hello, talk to Nigel. Uh, wizard. You may address me as Sir Nigel Higginbottom of the Marleybone Higginbottoms. All reputation, no doubt, precedes us. I say, with no humidity whatsoever, that pets are capable of an amazing variety of tasks. This very pavilion is the ideal place to learn about him. In the hatchery, Dr. Perot is an expert in pet hatching. Speak to him and he'll explain the astonishing ways your pet can grow and change. Near here are two shops. Young Dennett and Lowe sell a variety of pets and pet eggs in one shop, and in the other, two ladies named Dusty and Jackie provide all manner of exotic pet foods. In addition to keeping this pavilion clean, I have the honour of selling items for arena tickets earned from the pet derby. Go visit each shop to learn more. And return to me, and I'll explain more about arena tickets on the pet derby. And you can speak with my associate, Mr. Barker. Okay, so yeah, this episode's gonna be really boring, guys, because we're gonna spend 10 minutes in this pet village and reading dialogue and stuff, so enjoy. <laughs> oh, a customer! Come right in. We have all manner of snacks for your pet, whatever you need. After your pet completes a training game, it will be hungry. You can reward your pet with a tasty snack. The type of snack you feed it will increase its abilities in some fashion. The exact ability and how much it improves depend on the type of snack and how much your pet likes it. Different pets like different snacks, so you should try a variety of snacks and see what your pet likes best. And you won't find a better selection of snacks anywhere in the spiral. Guaranteed. So this whole vi this not a whole video, but these ten minutes, we're just going to be talking to random guys in the pet pavilion. Hmm. What are you waiting for? Take a seat in the hatching machine and we'll get started. Where's the other pet? Oh, my mistake. You're not a pet. Serves me right for not paying attention. That would have been a disaster. This is the hatchery, where pets can hatch new pet eggs. It's a remarkable process. Simply stand on the sigil near the hatcher and choose two adult pets you'd like to use. Then press the hatch button. If two wizards want to collaborate, both must stand on the sigil. Each can contribute a single adult pet, when you both press the ready buttons, voila! A new egg! If two wizards work together, they'll hatch two eggs. The egg will take after one of the original pets. Which pet and which trait, who can say? Once the egg is hatched, your new pet is just a baby and needs to be trained and fed. You can train your pet with the mini games offered in the pet pavilion. As you train your pet, it grows older and will develop new talents and powers. Pet talents help you in magical duels, while derby powers are used in the pet derby. Some rare pets are extremely powerful, with astonishing abilities. I really must get back to my work, so unless you're ready to hatch a pet... Okay, so that was uh, Dr. Piro. Oh my gosh, alright, let's talk to, um, let me talk to some other people here. Yeah, let's go. Welcome to our shop. This is the finest assemblage of exotic pet eggs you'll find. We have an inventory that ranges all across the spiral. Indeed, you'll not find a better selection of pet eggs anywhere in Wizard City. The spiral, that is. Anywhere in the spiral. Really? I had no idea. Alright, so these are the type of pets he has. He has some, like, you know, just some standard basic ones that are completely garbage and no one ever buys, but they're there if you want them to. Uh, let's talk to Nigel again. 
I trust that your tour of the grounds and its services was as entertaining as it was educational? As I mentioned previously, it is my honour to offer a wide variety of fine and unique items in trade for arena tickets. You'll earn arena tickets if your pet does well in the pet derby, or you'll receive gold as a consolation prize. You can use arena tickets to buy things here or from my friend Diego over on Unicorn Way. Mr. Barker will no doubt wish to regale you with information about the wonderful world of the pet derby, so I won't detain you any further. Well there, my prodigious prestidigitator. What did you think of our pet pavilion? I trust that my admirable associates bent your ear enough? Now that you've seen what wonders the Pet Pavilion offers, I encourage you to take advantage of the ample assortment of delightful diversions to train your pets. Your energy governs how often you may train your pet. It returns over time, but if you need more energy and cannot abide, you may purchase an energy elixir from the Crown Shop. If you don't train your pet, it won't grow up. So it's very important to pay attention to your pet and train it as much as you can. If you've an interest in participating in the pet derby, I am just the fella you need to speak to. Just a moment, though. Before I set your precious pet upon the perplexing paths of our pet derby, I must ask that you avail yourself of the information provided in the two rule books nearby. One of the books is generous with guidance about practice matches, while the other volume summarizes those that are ranked. Go and peruse them at your leisure, and stroll on back to me when you're sufficiently schooled. In the Pet Derby, you can race your pet in practice matches for fun, with nothing to gain or to lose. The Practice Pet Derby is a good way to learn the course and obstacles for each different track, and see which track your pet is best suited for. In the Ranked Pet Derby, your pet will race against other pets with prizes such as arena tickets or gold. The last place pet receives gold, while the other pets receive arena tickets. Your pet's wins and losses are measured on your character sheet, and your pet will gain ranking in the Pet Derby based on its performance. Let me explain the basics of the Pet Derby so that I might enhance your experience. There's a lot to go over, so I recommend you make yourself comfortable and pay attention. You can race your pet in the Pet Derby by going to one of the two book pedestals in the Pet Pavilion. One is for practice matches, the other is for ranked derby races. Practice derby races are classed by easy, medium, hard, and epic. You can create a new match, or you can quick join a match that has already been created. You will see the cross swords icon in the upper right corner of your screen when your pet is in the queue for a pet derby race. When the race is ready, you will see a screen letting you go to the arena. The goal of the pet derby is to come in first, steering your pet past obstacles and using your pet's derby powers against other pets. You can control your pet with the arrow or the WASD keys. It will go forward on the derby track automatically. Side arrows will make it switch lanes, and the back arrow slows it. The up arrow cheers your pet, making it go faster. The space bar helps your pet bypass obstacles, jumping or ducking each hurdle. You must time it just right. Hitting an obstacle slows your pet. Your pet's position in the race is displayed in the upper left corner of the screen. Under the position number is your pet's time for the race and what lap of the race you are on. On the upper right corner of the screen, the racetrack shows flags indicating where all the pets are on the derby track. Your pet's flag is largest, and its color matches the position number. Your pet has a resource called morale, displayed on the bar at the top center of the screen. Cheering your pet costs morale. Your pet gains morale when it successfully bypasses obstacles. Cheering costs different amounts of morale based on the terrain your pet is on. The cost is based on the terrain type and your pet's attributes. The attribute used has its icon next to the morale bar. Your pet's derby powers are the round icons in the top center of the screen just below the morale bar. You can click on these with your mouse or you can use the 1, 2, 3, and 4 keys to activate them. Derby powers can boost your pet's performance, hinder other pets, put obstacles on the track, 
force pets to change lanes or other tricks. You can mouse over a power's icon to see what it does. Effects on your pet appear as icons on either side of your pet. Helpful effects are on the left. Bad effects are on the right. A countdown timer shows how long each effect remains on your pet. Try to steer your pet through the floating stars. They will give your pet speed bonuses and give your pet temporary immunity from other pet powers. Avoid bombs and banana peels. Bombs will slow your pet down and banana peels will slow and cause your pet to change lanes. And now that you've done your homework, it's time to play. I'll wager you can barely contain your enthusiasm, so step right up, ready your pet, and let's go! No. No, we're not gonna go anywhere, except we're gonna leave this goddamn pet pavilion because we just wasted 11 minutes of our life. But, uh, as you can see, we are done with all side quests now in Wizard City. Unfortunately, you know, I had to do this quest, you know, one day or another. I had her, you know, I knew it was there for the longest time. I never did it, uh, just because I know how long and boring it is, but, uh... Now that we actually have a side quest left in Wisteria, and we never did, so I told you last video that there's a bunch of side quests uh, that I kind of missed, um, or they just became available after I finished the world, or I'm not sure what happened, but uh, thanks to this quest helper, now I could find them. And it's going to be over here to the right, I believe it's the uh, Samurai Cow Guy, yep. Greetings again, Honorable Wizard of Ravenwood. I have been told that a part of this tournament is a cultural exchange. Would you like to learn about Mushu floral arrangement? It is a profound and beautiful part of our artistic heritage. You must first collect three flowers of exceeding beauty. I am told that the most wondrous are found on Tanglewood Way. Alright, so now we need to find, I believe, like three beautiful flowers or something. I don't know. Yeah, I believe, yeah, on Tanglewood Way. And, uh, you still can't go in through this way, even though you already saved this whole town and village. Uh, but whatever. So, but yeah, I apologize, you know, it's it's just, it was complete dialogue for like 11 minutes. Um, just one of those things, you know, it happens, it happens, uh, at least we got it out of the way. Um... It's just, it's just, it's just, I mean, I get why if you're a new player, you know, the pet pavilion can be kind of confusing a little bit, but it's not to the extent that you need to spend 11 minutes reading dialogue. So, yeah. For those of you who actually sat through all of that and didn't skip ahead through the video, I'm going to give you mad props because I'm not going to lie, I probably would have skipped through the video myself. <laughs> if I saw that, uh, even if, if, if the, the commentator even told me it's going to be boring, it's probably gonna be boring so here is the uh, last flower let's go ahead and uh, go back to our little friend Kisai Shugenji I believe his name was I remember that name because it's pretty catchy <laughs> let's go ahead and uh, talk to him excellent choices you have a discerning eye for beauty now you must take the flowers you have picked and place them into a harmonious and pleasant arrangement I have set up a table for just such a purpose. Step up to it, use the tools at your disposal, and create beauty. Alright, so the flowers are right over here on this table. You arrange the flowers, but you're a little messy about it. I do not think that your arrangement is the best you are capable of. Perhaps you would like to try again? Sure, we'll, we'll try again. You meditate for a moment. Thinking of calmness and inner quiet. Now you try again. The result speaks for itself. Your work is superlative. I bow to your skill. Alright, so we are uh, done with that. And there's no more quests left in Wisteria, so we are done. Done, 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 done. Uh, now let's go ahead and go to the Village of Sorrow, our new area and the last one in Mushu, guys. Last area in Mushu. So, we've come a, we've come a while. Please, esteemed wizard, could you help me? It is a matter of honor. I was ordered to deliver a message to the Jed Champion, but the Death Soldiers took it when the Death Oni attacked. Please, win it from them and bring it to me. Alright, so we got another quest here. Let's talk to this guy. Who's there? 
Have you been here before? Do I know you? Oh, great wizard, I have to leave my family because an evil spirit haunts us. Ken Shui's lower lip trembles and he speaks in a whisper. Please, revered one, could you do away with these undead? They will surely send the evil spirit after us. So he wants us to defeat, I believe, ten cursed Rollins. Uh, so, but now I'm just gonna, in this last remaining parts of the video, I'm just gonna collect a bunch of uh, side quests for the main part. There's also another one right here if you go to the left for Wei Po. Uh, let's go ahead and collect that one. I'm glad you're here, your wizardship. Can I call you by your name? Great. I'm Wei Pei. Here's the thing. A haunted house up ahead is spewing out undead. No one living or dead can get past the magical seal on the doorway to stop the influx of undead. It must be tied to the undead. Do us a favor and defeat some undead around here to weaken that seal. All right, so it's Wei Pei, not Wei Po. My bad. I apologize. I apologize. Um... And there is still another uh, side quest here. See, I love, I love this quest helper thing. You know, it makes you confirm, you know, two things. If there's any side quests left in the area slash world. Or if there's any, uh, you know, quests uh, that when you first enter an area that you might have missed or not picked up. So, there's, there's a wooden chest if you want it right there. Um, and yeah, it's going to let us go talk to Wavebringer. Remember that guy? <laughs> I'm pretty sure you guys remember that guy. Uh, from Shirataki Temple. So, I'm surprised how fast we got through Mushu, man. Um, I mean, we're not done, but uh, this is the last area like that's you know has villagers and quests and boss battles and all that other good jazz, you know. Um, the remaining areas I'll obviously be doing on my subscriber meetup. So here is Wayfringer. Let's go ahead and talk to him. Four spirits here, unclean. Be found, Woodwalkers! Save forest! Defeat, Woodwalkers! Collect tainted bark! Bring to me! Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.